we're going to make a weighted eye mask or eye pillow today so these are great just for um relaxation purposes so even if you've just come home from work and you're tired you could just lie on the sofa pop one of these on your eyes and it just makes you nice and chilled out i haven't got any but you could also add in some dried lavender when you start filling it with the rice and that's quite a good way of um, adding in a scent so basically what i've got is 28 centimeters long by 13 centimeters high and I need to cut out two of these in the um, inner section fabric. I've then cut out a third one of these in the outer, the you know, the actual cover. So one of those, so you cut two for the inner bag, you cut one in this size for the outer bag. So this should be 24 by 13 so I'll just adjust that in a second in fact yeah so I just need to trim that down a bit and then the third pattern piece is 13 high again by 12 across because we're going to have a little envelope wrap to get our inner bag in okay so those are all the bits that you need super simple just get some scrap paper and draw it out or you could draw it straight onto your pattern so we're going to start by working on the inner bag so we're going to sew we're going to leave a hole along here so that we can fill it and we're going to sew around here all the way across the bottom, up the top and up there. So I like to give myself a little idiot guide so that I don't sew my hole closed. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do this super quick because it's a speedy lunchtime project. So this inner bag could be made out uh, of any little scraps that you've got going, it doesn't have to match. So I'm just pinning all the way around I like to use a um, diagonal pin at my corners so that I know that they are corners. And I've put crosses where I need to start and then stop. And that's to allow me um, a kind of idiot guide not to sew the whole thing closed. So what this is, this is a project where we are going to sew it right sides together. You can't really tell on this fabric, there's no right and wrong side. And then once we've sewn it, we're gonna turn it the right way out. So at the moment it's inside out and that's called bagging out. And it's a project, it's a technique that we use a lot in sewing. You sew everything inside out and then turn it through to the right side. So we're gonna start here all the way around and I've allowed 1.5 centimeters seam allowance for this project. All right guys, so I'm gonna to head to the machine. I've just grabbed a magnetic pin cushion, um, magnetic seam guide, which I'm going to use on my machine. Probably shouldn't on this computerized one, but I think I'm going to get away with it for this time. So we're going to go to the machine on my standard stitch length on this machine. Um, I want to take this down. This machine goes up to 2.9 as a standard. So around about 2.6, 2.7, and I'm going to use a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. So my magnetic seam guide, if I line that up with a little groove to the right of the foot, that says 15 mil or 1.5. This gives me a really nice lip to line up my fabric with. So we're gonna start here. So that um, lower one of those crosses and I'm lining up the edge of my fabric with that little magnetic guy. So it makes it really easy to see your seam allowances. I'm gonna start with a little bit of a back stitch. Okay, a couple of stitches forward and then a couple of stitches back. Okay, so there's a little guide on here, guys, that you can see usually down here for where to turn the corner. So on this machine, I think it's about here. So we're gonna just sew all the way down and I'm focusing on keeping the edge aligned with my magnet. You could use a little stack of post-its now when my lower edge, this horizontal one, lines up with this guide, so I might have gone a stitch too far, I'm just going to go back a couple, and so I've got this little mark here, yours might be more of an obvious line, when I turn that round, so no that's not the right one, sorry I'm sewing with a machine that I don't usually use for beginners, okay, so then we're going to 
just carry on. Slow and steady wins the race. So we're sewing down the short side. So my tip if you're a beginner is to just measure from the needle forward to give yourself a guideline. I think it's probably that little dot there. So I stop when I get to my guideline, needle down into the fabric, which means I can pivot, whiz round like this, and maybe go a little bit faster. So I'm always focusing on keeping my edge lined up with that lip of that magnet. So these are a great way to um, get used to seeing a seam allowance. And then I go slowly to my corner, drop my needle in when I hit my mark, turn that corner, put my foot back down, whiz back up. Okey doke. Turn in my last corner and remember my cross indicates where I'm going to stop. So I'm just heading for that sort of middle point. And you want to make sure you've got enough space to be able to get your rice or your filling in. Okay, guys, so. I've sewn all the way around my inner bag. So I've got a hole in the top, which is where we are going to pour in the rice. So this is a very light fabric. I'm gonna show you a couple of tips for when you are turning through corners and things. So you can see I've gone all the way around and we've got this little opening. So you can come in and trim away these corners if you want to reduce the bulk. Okay, so if this was a heavy fabric, um, so I'm gonna do that on two corners. But I'm gonna show you a little corner turning trick. So if I place my thumb inside, okay, so I've got my left hand and the thumb has gone all the way inside to that corner. And then I'm pushing that really taut right into that corner. I'm gonna tuck this side under, this side of the seam allowance, that side under so I've made a really flat square at the back and then I'm going to pinch right on the tip of that corner and I'm rolling around and not letting go of that pinch until right at the last minute and can you see guys I've got an almost perfect little corner there and this is one of the ones that I haven't trimmed so this is how I normally turn my corners so that I'm not weakening my fabric by doing too much trimming so I'll show you that one more time on another corner so you push your left thumb I'm right-handed so my left thumb's gone all the way in and then I fold under one side of the seam allowance then the second side of the seam allowance that's made a really flat corner and then you pinch with your left forefinger roll that around and again can you see that guys I've got an almost perfect square so what happens if you don't do this little pinching is the fabric all bunches up and that's why you tend not to get nice corners can you see the difference and then you have to push something in so I always do this with every corner I turn this little trick okay not going to spend too long so I want to get the bag finished before you go back to work or before the end of your lunch break okie doke so now I've turned this the right way around and we will just give this a little press. So if you want to be super meticulous, you can give this a press all the way around, but um, it's gonna go inside. So this is the inner bag, guys. This is the one that we're gonna fill with the rice. All I wanted to do was just to have that edges folded in like so. Now I'm going to grab my rice and I'm going to use one of my pattern pieces and try and make it into a little bit of a funnel. Okay, so I've just rolled up some paper. In this case, it happens to be my pattern piece. I didn't actually have any funnels to do this with, okay? Then I'm going to grab hold of my rice. So it's just regular, you know, rice. And 
The trick with these bags is you don't want to overfill them. You don't want a really fat sausage sitting on your eyes. So just using that, fill it up. I'm so gonna get rice everywhere, aren't I guys? Okay, so I definitely put some more in. So how much you fill them by is totally up to you. But you, like I say, don't make these totally stuffed because they're not gonna feel very nice. It's just gonna feel like a dead weight on your eyes. And what you want is for it to sort of nestle. Ooh. So that's about a, a third of the bag of rice. So sort of have a little feel I could maybe put a little bit more in there, but like I say, I don't want it to be like a well-stuffed sausage. So I'm just gonna give myself just a tidge more rice. So that's maybe half a bag. Okay, I might have overdone this now. Okay, I'm happy with that. Can you see it's sort of like half full and you could even pin it closed and pop it on your face and see if that feels funny. So when you're ready um, with all your rice, you are then going to pin this little um, opening closed. And you've got a couple of choices here. You can hand stitch it or I'm just going to machine all the way across the top quite close to that edge. All right, so you can either hand stitch this closed or I'm gonna to top stitch it. So that's sort of like the inner bag. And can you see how it's sort of got a little bit of floppiness, so it's not too full. And like I said, I could have added in some lavender or any other sort of fragrances you like. If you're gonna make them as gifts, you could put like a Christmassy sort of um, dried scent in. What would you put in there? Anyway, so lavender is a popular one. And you could, be careful with the pins, you could just pop that on and see how that feels. So we've got that like nice floppy squishiness. And I'm just going to, I'm using black so you can see the stitching, but obviously if you want this to look nice inside, make sure you use a matching thread. I like to just sew the whole lot closed rather than the, the little hole because it just looks neater. So I'm focusing on sewing pretty close to that folded edge so that I'm catching everything in place. And again, remember this is the inner bag, so it's not, it doesn't have to be super perfect, all right? So it's sort of like edge stitching. I'm about an eighth of an inch away from this folded edge here. And again, if it's too full, it's kind of awkward to get in. So you might find if you overfill these, you could use a zipper foot. So yeah, I've got a lot of rice down this end. So I'm just gonna drop my needle, lift up my foot, and just smush some of that out of my way. Okay? And then I don't really wanna sew over rice because I might break my needle. So yeah, I'd suggest maybe doing this with a zipper foot. That way, if you've got any wadgy bits of rice, pesky stuff, I can fill some rice, I'm just going to stop stitching there. So that's that hole closed and our rice is all nice and contained inside. So we have got our inner bag made and you can, um, let's see how this feels. Oh yeah, that feels nice. There's just something really comforting about it. <laughs> Okay, so now we're gonna make the cover. And the reason why I would make an inner bag and then a separate cover is because um, they get dirty. And if you don't have a separate cover, you've got to empty all the rice to wash them. So by having a cover, it will stay nice and clean. So the first thing to do on our cover is we're gonna work on these two um, pieces that overlap. So what we've got now is these are the two pieces that are going to form one side of our um, 
bag cover and they're going to overlap a little bit like an envelope cushion. So what I need to do is to put a hem here. So on the, this is the 13, so you could have given yourself 13 high and 12 wide. You could give yourself a little notch here when you make up your little pattern so that you know this is the edge that you are going to hem. Now I'm using jersey because it feels nice and if you haven't sewn a lot with jersey before but you like the idea of using jersey, maybe put some interfacing on this just to make it a little bit more stable to sew. So this is the edge that I'm going to hem where I put that little notch and it's a double folded hem and I'm going to press up one centimetre like so. and then a second centimetre. Oh, it's just a really basic little hem. Now there's two centimetres allowed, if you wanted to you could have done half a centimetre and then an, uh, one and a half, so however you divide that is up to you. I think one and one works. Okay. And then I'm just going to pop some pins to hold this in place before I take this to the sewing machine. So when I go to the sewing machine, I'm going to be sewing close to this inner edge here, but I want my stitching to be parallel with this outer edge. So I'm going to find a good spot and then use my magnet as a guide. Okay guys, so I'm going to do the, the back in two halves. Um, so now I've pressed this in place and did you notice I did all the pressing before I put any pins in? I never actually press over pins because you can leave permanent little marks and I always press a hem before I sew it because I just find that you get a much crisper finish. I am going to just move this magnet and I'm going to line up my needle somewhere about an eighth of an inch away from this folded edge. And then I'm looking at where my outer edge lines up and that will be my guide because we only see the stitching from the outside so we want to make sure it's parallel with this folded edge. So again I probably would only do a couple of back stitches, I don't want to see any back stitches on the outside. So now that I've got this in place, wow these are so powerful. <laughs> So that's around about a centimetre-ish. So then I would use my magnet or my post-it to give me that custom guide. And there we go. So I'm not really focusing here, I'm focusing here. So that I know that this is going to look parallel to the edge from the outside. So that's hem number one and you can see that the stitching is parallel with this edge here and whenever you put any stitching into fabric it's a good idea just to run the iron over it and it sets in the stitching and kind of gives it a little um, stretch so it looks much better just by, and this is what's called under pressing often in seams. So that is going to be the upper half of our back and it's going to overlap with this side. So take the pattern piece off of here. And then I'm going to put an, a hem on this short edge, exactly the same way. And if we press up one centimeter, Oops, I've got some grains of rice in the way there. So the grid on the middle of this ironing blanket, you can use like a pressing guide. Um, it's been laundered, so it's not 100% accurate anymore. But when they're brand new, they're pretty good. You can also buy a little ruler or you can make one. So this is on that line there, that folded edge. And when I fold that up, when I come to the next one, I know that that's my centimetre. So it's a nice little way of getting incremental measures in 
without having to get your ruler out or anything else and you can get a cardboard version of this as well okay so once that's all pressed in this is a different kind of jersey so it's not holding it quite as well oh that's quite hot and then put a few pins so one little trick guys if you let this cool down the creases will stay much more set into the fabric rather than always speeding along like I am and um, trying to get it to the machine while it's still warm when it will definitely kind of move around okay so we're going to take this to the machine and just like the other side I'm going to find a spot here and then sew parallel to this outer edge and hopefully I can use exactly the same guide so I'm just going to turn this pin the other way around because it's kind of getting caught on the magnet there all right so because I was more accurate with my pressing, this needs to come in. And again, because I'm using jersey, so there's no reason to use jersey. You could have just used a regular cotton for this. I just fancied having a little soft jersey one. And what I did is I used these threads to sort of anchor the first few stitches as I went through. I think that's my pins. There we go. Nothing to see there guys, just a little bit of uh, machine blippery. So yeah, this is a much stretchier jersey than the other one, so it's not as easy to sew. Okay, go. It's not my best sewing, but it will do. So yeah, give yourself a little bit of help with jersey, put some interfacing or not use jersey. So again, I'm just setting in that press. It's just stretching out my stitching. So this is like an envelope back and you can make these with a zip in the edge, but I wanted to show you a really quick and easy way where you don't need anything else other than some scraps of fabric, bag of rice and your sewing machine. So what we've got here is, this is the right side of the front of the mask cover then I'm going to take and whichever one you want to see on the outside is the one that you want to lay over now I want to see the short piece so I'm going to take this and with the right side of this I'm going to lay that on top of the right side of my front and just align these edges here okay and then again with the right side of the bigger part of the back I'm going to take this and align this with the edges and the short edges there so you can see we've got just a little bit of an overlap and the reason you need an overlap here can you see that guys is that if you haven't the bag can kind of open up this 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 envelope opening and it won't look so nice so this time we are going to pin all the way around all four sides because we're going to turn this through through the envelope opening okay so again I'm giving myself little pivot points at my corners and I'm going to sew it from the side where I can see this overlap and that's just to make sure that none of this gets all bunched up as I go around okay and the only reason I'm using a different fabric is so for the video it makes more sense about which bit overlaps etc because sometimes if it's all coordinated you can't really see so super speedy pinning okay so this time we are going to sew all the way around these four sides so we're going to hop back on the machine and this time i'm going to make sure that my magnet is back to my 1.5 and like i said if you want to give yourself a horizontal marker you can grab the tape measure measure from the needle so the 1.5 on this machine comes just beyond that little point there so I can use that now as my guide to turn the corners so I tend to not start on a corner I'm going to start somewhere in the middle and that means I get a much neater corner 
when I come to join back in. So start here. And again, I've got my edges are 1.5 from the knee. Well, the edges are lined up with a magnet, so they're 1.5 from the needle. And just whiz around. So I'm lining up this lower edge, walking my needle until that lines up with my magnet. And that gives me the perfect corner. So again, when you make this little template, if you want to be less wasteful, you could use a smaller seam allowance. I've allowed for 1.5. You could use one centimeter, and that way you've got less waste if you're using up little scraps. Um, I just did 1.5 because that's a kind of standard measurement for home sewers. So again, I'm waiting until this horizontal line lines up with the horizontal part of my magnet. Drop my needle, raise up my foot, turn that corner. And here is where I want to be careful because I don't want this to start bunching up. So I would use maybe my scissor just to keep that really flat. See how that's bunching up? So just pay attention when you come to this junction. I've smoothed it all back down. Just waiting until this lower edge lines up with my magnet. Turn my corner and now I'm back to where I started so overlap my stitches and then do a bit of a back stitch. So the next thing would be um, you might want to trim some of this or trim off the corners and um, maybe trim some of this seam allowance, maybe trim my corners. For this, you could trim it back. So this is why in fashion they don't have 1.5. Can you see all the waste that we've got by trimming this away? I could have just started with a smaller seam allowance. Um, and you just might want to layer any areas if you've got any bulkiness. So you could sort of angle off the corners here. But I'm too excited, I want to turn this through and have a little look-see. So this is where we're going to turn it through. So again, I'm going to use that little trick for um, getting a nice square on my corner. So I'm folding one half of the seam allowance and then the other half and then pinching on the back and turning that round. So can you see straight away, all the seam allowance is laid nice and flat and then come into the next corner. Okay, so we've got two more to go. That's on the short end. The trick is that you have to pinch it and hold on for the to the very very last minute. Oh, look at this, guys! Okay, so you can see that we've got this little kind of envelope opening got a nice little overlap and then if you want to you can give this a little press just to make everything look nice so yeah i've only used a contrast so you can see what the back looks like this is the part that i would normally put against my eyes so there's no seam or anything to be irritating and then we're going to take our inner bag and we're going to stuff it inside. So 
so I'm letting gravity do a little bit of the work for me. And then squish that bit up into there. So this would be on the outside because I wouldn't necessarily want to feel that little opening in there. And that would be the side that goes next to my eyes. And that is your little weighted eye mask. Let's have a try, shall we? Um, obviously I can't lie down. So I've got the um, side without any seams. Oh, oh that's nice. So it's a little sort of sensory thing. <laughs> Sorry, this is probably a terrible angle. It's a little sensory thing that the weight just sort of calms you apparently. And they do feel really nice at the end of yoga or if you meditate or just before you're trying to go to sleep, if you just want to sort of, it almost gives your eyes permission to kind of relax. That was easy. So that has taken under an hour. And that was with me sort of talking through the processes. So it's a super easy little project. Like I say, you might find that this is too long for you or it's too deep that way. This is just a kind of standardish size for these. So uh, again, I haven't overfilled it. So I've got that squishiness or that, how it sort of feels like it can move around and then it will relax onto your face. That's personal preference. So you might want it more stuff. Just don't make, don't make it solid. Um, hope that you enjoyed this session and um, I will see you guys next week. I'm probably gonna do another beginner friendly project because we're coming up to my 11 year anniversary as a thrifty stitcher and I started by teaching beginners. So I'm just doing a few beginner friendly projects. Also, I think sometimes it's just nice to have something that's quick and easy and doesn't involve too much thinking. All right guys, so I'm gonna say over and out <laughs> in a second and hope you have a lovely Wednesday and I'll see you guys maybe next week. Let me know if there's any specific quick and easy little project that you'd like me to show you how to make next week. Bye!